Hello and welcome to Dingo's Ate My Podcast Season 2. I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. And this week we're discussing the episode of Angel, I've Got You Under My Skin. Yeah. This episode originally aired February 15th, 2000, and attracted approximately 4.66 million viewers. So let's start off with the box office for this week. Do you have any guess what the number one movie in America was? Mm. Suppose from the last week from there, well, with it being mediocre, I don't know. With how big the franchise is, I wouldn't be surprised if Scream 3 stuck around. Uh, unfortunately, it is not Scream 3. Yeah, Ooh. It is a movie I would not expect you to be familiar with. It's called The Whole Nine Yards, which was a crime comedy film that nobody remembers. Yeah, to be honest, it's not really ringing much of a bell. Like, there's the ting of, I've heard this title before, but I don't think I've ever watched the movie. I wouldn't expect you to have. It's very unmemorable. Okay, so, uh, number one song in America this week. Any guesses? Hmm... It's different than last time. Oh, it was different from last time, even from Savage Garden. Yes. Get around with that. Time of the year. Hmm. Nothing immediately comes to mind that I can specifically remember at that time. Okay. Uh, Well, because this song was only number one for a single week, it was Hmm. Thank God I Found You by Mariah Carey featuring Joe and 98 Degrees. Uh, always with the Mariah Carey. Understandable. She was, she was very popular at the time. Mm-hmm. All right. And finally, for video games in the year 2000. We only have two for this week. And then next week we're going to have, like, a shit ton. Or maybe Duly it's noted. the week after. I think the week after. Anyway, this week we have two games. So the first one I'm going to bring up is... Uh, SNK Gals Fighters, which is a Neo Geo Pocket uh, fighting game. Uh, basically, they took a bunch of their like King of Fighters and all these other characters, put them into one game. Like all the women that they had in these other fighting games, they're put into one game. Sell it, make some money. Makes sense. Still. Yeah, it... Um, I don't think it was terribly popular. Well, it, I mean, it was on the Neo Geo Pocket, so, you know. Yeah. Sorry, Pocket Color. Anyway, there is another game I am slightly more excited to talk about, even though it's friggin' dreadful. Mm. So, on February 17th, 2000, on the Game Boy Color, the Nintendo 64, and the PlayStation, this little company released had their first game released a little a little wrestling promotion hmm we got ecw hardcore revolution are you at all yeah. familiar with this game i have a vague inkling that this is one of the games that you forced me and a buddy of ours to play no i haven't forced you to play this I, even i am not that cruel david oh, okay So that one wrestling game that nearly tormented us to death was not the particular game in question. No, that was like Here Comes the Pain. Here Comes the Pain was great. This game was dreadful. Um, Duly noted. So basically, yeah, it was just, they were really shitty. They were, it was impossible to control. Uh, In order to do like a basic move, you had, it was like a six button combo. It was terrible. Hmm. It was like you want to do an arm drag okay press a b a b right trigger and hit left on the joystick to do an arm drag oh, it was terrible make sense? yeah it seems it was like super difficult to control uh at least i thought i don't know i, I remember nobody liked the game and apparently the game boy color version is worse which makes sense anyway yeah it's the first time we've had a chance to talk about a wrestling game so also it's only one of two ecw games and they have another one coming out uh before the end of the season anyway this episode okay uh wesley shows off the newest addition in his collection of weaponry to angel 
<laughs> which ends up being a knife that's used to kill demons that are extinct. <laughs> Still pointy. I'm sure you can stab it with a thing. <laughs> Probably won't kill them, but you can at least stab them. Yes, yes. Alrighty. Uh, Cordelia's uh, has been is making brownies, which smell not great, apparently. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not being able to cut through it with a butter knife is any indication. So she takes Wesley's fancy new dagger and starts trying to cut through them. <laughs> which would probably work, but also maybe cut through the dish as well, which is probably not great. And Wesley's like, what are you doing? It's very funny. Mm-hmm. It's like, that knife's for killing extinct demons. <laughs> oh, it's very good. Um, enjoying the spectacle of uh, Cordy and Wes bickering, Angel tries to make peace and achieves total silence by inadvertently calling Wesley Doyle. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> yes. Uh, elsewhere, uh, some children are squabbling over toys until their mother tells them it's bedtime. The kids protest until sternly admonished by their father. The parents tuck their children in, and the father sternly build, bids a uh, broken-hearted mother to padlock the daughter's door. Behind them, another door named Ryan, labeled Ryan, is already padlocked for the night. Oh, this seems like it'll be a fun episode, huh? Yeah, if the indication that the windows were also barred didn't also bring up a little couple red flags i mean i feel like in the in la in the 90s that probably wouldn't have been super unusual like to have like burglar bars on your windows like that probably wouldn't on its own be a red flag Mm, depending on the neighborhood i I guess depending on how busy it sort of is within more residential districts yeah I feel like that wouldn't be super uncommon in, like, a big city like that in America. Anyway. Mm. Mind you, if you saw that in Canada, you'd be like, the fuck? (laughs) That would be super sus. Um, So, uh, Cordelia insists that Angel talk to her about uh, about Doyle, obviously, because it's both the same. Just as Angel begins uh, to express the guilt he carries over the manner of Doyle's death, Cordelia is racked by a vision. Angel and Wesley stake out um, the Envision house in the suburbs, but all seems quiet. The Angel investigations team is about to, uh, pair is about to leave when Wesley spots a young boy walking across the yard in his pajamas. Down the street, a car revs its engine and speeds towards them. Angel leaps from the Plymouth, grabs the boy, and rolls into the grass with him just as the, uh, as the vehicle rushes by. Noticing the bloody scrape on Angel's shoulder, the boy, who, com- who seems completely unconcerned about the... Uh, his uh, near brush with death asks Angel if he's going to cry. Angel jokingly pretends to consider it but uh, before finally deciding he doesn't think he's going to. Uh, the boy's parents run out and they're all like, holy shit, our kid almost got hit by a car. Well, at least the mother is. The father's a little bit more, hmm, that didn't go as planned almost. Huh. Hmm. The mother offers to take Angel inside to tend to his wound, and of course he accepts because he's sus that something's going on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the father puts Ryan back to bed as the mother tends to the scrape on Angel's arm. Shocked at one point to notice how that it seems to be healing rather rapidly. Uh, the mother's distracted mm-hmm. when Angel returns to the subject of her family. She seems chronically anx- uh, anxious uh with the, and not being forthcoming and stops talking altogether when Seth returns to the living room is the father um, mm-hmm. learning that the Andersons have recently moved to the area Angel begins to probe more deeply for information such as how their son got out of his room as, where, as well as where he was likely going and why uh, Seth the father becomes hostile uh, and basically uh, reminds him that he hasn't told him his name Angel introduces himself as Angel Jones uh, seemingly uh, to not notice his hesitation, Paige, who is the mother, uh, rather too delightedly reveals again over her husband's muttered objection that she collects angels. To Angel's discomfort, discomfort, she is instantly convinced that he has been sent to help them, 
especially since he refuses all offer of payment or uh, anything else. However, when Paige insists on inviting him to supper the following night as a thank you, um, Seth openly disapproves. Angel uses her enthusiasm to his advantage, offering, uh, after a dramatic pause, Angel uh, brings a glow to Paige's face by asking her, what can I bring? After squarely meeting Seth's furious glare. So, I'm going to speed this along a lot. Basically, they're going to find out that their son, Ryan, is possessed by a demon. Right? Like I said the previous week, this is the exorcist, but we're going to have a bit of a twist. So they're going to do the whole the whole exorcism thing. All the particular actions get the particular things to exorcise a demon? Exactly. Uh, and I believe you said you hadn't seen The Exorcist, have you? Essentially only just little clips of the particular goings-on, but not the whole film in its entirety. Okay. I would argue it's probably not, you know. It's fine. Mm. Okay. So, near the end of the episode, they are able to... Um, <coughs> excuse me. They are able to exercise the demon. However... Uh, uh, Wesley follows Angel into the dark. Shortly, they hear a quiet moaning from up ahead and come face to face with a terrifying Ethros demon, which is the kind of demon that had possessed the boy. On the calm, mm-hmm. the Ethros demon explains that in a millennia of tormenting innocent souls, he had never encountered uh, he never encountered a being that frightened him as much as he did of the Ryan's of the, sorry of the Andersons son ryan he reveals that the boy is not pure or innocent but totally chaotic amoral and soulless inside the boy had been the true box imprisoning the uh the ethros demon which fuck that's bad uh, hmm. and the demon was trying to escape at any cost um angel realizes that the message save me which was written in marbles earlier in the episode was in fact the demon's plea and that the ethros on the first night he encountered the anderson family was actually the one sleepwalking Ryan into the street in order to effect um, his own fatal escape from being trapped in this kid. So yeah, basically the whole deal is like, the demon's not the bad one, the kid's the really fucked up one. Hmm. And then at the end Hmm. of the episode, he tries to burn his sister alive by pouring gasoline in her room and lighting a match and like locking his parents in their room. However, emergency services are able to get there in time and save everyone and the kid goes away. Well, I think it was the case that Angel broke in and saved the yes. daughter and then yeah. got them all out and then safety services came along and did their business. Yes, yeah. So, what did you think of this episode? Oh, we also get a small appearance by Kate, but she's barely in the episode, so. Yeah, just near the end with all the particular things. No one who will definitely with everything that it sort of showed without knowing the twist to it, it definitely works and it's sobering with bringing this sort of idea into the show that people with that sort of mindset can exist and the issues that can come from it yeah yeah no it's it's a it's a good episode i'm not going to say it's a fun episode because it's not fun but it is a good episode mhm all righty so for this episode uh, we do have some international titles. Unfortunately, neither of them are terribly good. Oh. Uh, so in French, it is exorcism. Which, I mean, yeah. fine. Uh, mm-hmm. And in German, it is evil itself. Uh-huh. The twist of what is the evil thing. Exactly. You're clever. Um, oh, also... Uh, I'm sure you got this, but uh, maybe somebody didn't. There's a, The title of the episode is a reference to a fr- uh, Frank Sinatra song. Yes, yes. I, I assumed most people would get that, but I know somebody won't. And, you know. Yeah, not everyone is big musical buffs. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like you would know that song even if you're not a big music person, because I'm not. Anyway. Uh, Depending. Did you have anything else about this episode? 
No, I think on whole, it's definitely interesting with the series that dives into not only the supernatural and horror aspects of things, but also just other realistic things that can relate to horror and just the, how that sort of stuff can showing the effect of those sorts of things. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, next week we'll be discussing the episode, the prodigal. Hmm. I have good news, Dave. We're getting more flashbacks. In the decent sense, or is it essentially going to be a complete run through of all the previous things that have happened? No, we are going to see Angel haunted by images of his past as a young man in 1753 Ireland. Or should I say, Liam. His overbearing father, his vampire birth by his past lover Darla, and his family's murder by his own hand. Meanwhile, when Angel spots Kate's father at a crime scene, his investigation may change Kate's life forever. Dun, dun, dun. Hmm. So yes, Angel's real name is Liam. Okay. I just thought you'd want to know. Because they're going to call him that a bunch, and it might have got confusing. Yeah, well, at the very least, it isn't Keith. I mean, he's Irish, though. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so if there's nothing else, until next time, I'm Paul. And I'm Dave.